This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is The Omega. Hey, how are you? Yay. <laughs> oh, it's... it's been a time how, how have you been the past few weeks i've been i've been okay it fortunately isn't getting so so hot yet because that's yeah. something i hate about the summer so yeah but you're up you're up north in pennsylvania aren't you yeah but it's still like northeastern pennsylvania i'm sorry like the the area that we're in it's like not quite the mid-atlantic not quite the northeast is like the weather armpit of the nation really uh. like we get really bad winters and we get really humid summers like, it won't be as hot as it'll be, like, say, somewhere like Texas, but it's the humidity that kills you. Well, you know that. You're in Florida, so... Yeah, I'm in the taint of Florida. That's even worse. <laughs> Florida's taint. Yes. I mean, and it's even worse. Like, right now, we've got our AC going. It's like 76, and I'm still sweating my balls off here. It's like... It's like... I, I was talking with Axiom last night about temperature differences and everything, and I told her, you know what? You know, we could... I could, like, walk outside... And, and my, my actual physical crotch area would be colder than what it is outside. Ew. Yeah, very ew and very... <sighs> I hate the summer. I can't wait to live in the UK where it's different. Yes. <laughs> where they're like, oh no, it's 75 degrees. But whatever that is, in centipede, Celsius, whatever. Yeah. And meanwhile, people like you and me, we sit that out there in short sunbathing. We're like, yeah, hey, what's up? <laughs> That would be awesome. Ugh. It occasionally goes before, below freezing in the winter. Occasionally. Occasionally. So I can deal with that. So kind of like Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> no, liar. Listen, the sheer amount of times I dug my car out of over two feet of snow this past winter, I'm ready for occasional. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad I've never had to actually dig my car out of snow. You know, because cause even before Indy, I lived in Casper, Wyoming, where it's, it's it gets pretty balls cold, too. Or maybe lack of balls cold. I don't know. It gets cold. Shrunk, shrunken balls cold. Shrunken balls cold. <laughs> yeah. And, and, of course, I had to do some winter driving. My first experience, winter driving. Hooray. <laughs> I nearly, at one point, I was driving. I was driving slow enough to where it didn't, to where it was okay. But I went to go make a turn or something. And the back of my car start decided it wanted to turn ahead of me. Yeah, that can be really scary. Yeah, and there was a car coming from the from the uh, street I was trying to get to turn into. Thankfully, nobody got hit. I managed to stop in time, and the car managed to go on their merry little goddamn way. And I'm sitting there like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, it's 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 really exasperating, especially because you you're trying to drive so slow. Just just in case, and then there's usually some asshole right behind you, be like, "Why aren't you going faster?" It's like, "Motherfucker, and you're like, you want you want to you want to careen into a building? You be my guest." It's like a blizzard, and they're like, "Go faster." Yeah, which funny story? Okay, I don't, I, I can't say funny story about it, but interesting story about uh, careening into buildings. When I lived in Wyoming for a while, I didn't even have a car, and it was you know closer to the summer. And so it was like, okay, you know, I can walk. Well, spring, summer-ish, whatever. And I was walking to work two miles one way, by the way. Ah, so I was walking to work, and I'm walking by, I see the traffic, go by, okay, hi, guys, whatever, yada, yada, yada. And all of a sudden, I hear this boom behind me. And I look back, and there's somebody that, that just embedded their vehicle into the Albertsons right there. I think it was Jesus. Albertsons. It's like, I don't know what happened. I, I don't know if there was just if they just lost control of the car. It wasn't it wasn't icy, so it, it, it's just what the hell. And w the reason why I say interesting instead of anything else like funny or whatever, actually, it's kind of sad. I heard later that whoever was in that car, because because like, the uh, break rooms at the Walmart, you know, they had the news on. Yeah. And it turns out that person died. I'm like, oh, oh shit! My God. I just I, I I technically saw somebody die. Holy shit! Yeah. Maybe it was an older person and they mis mistook the the brake and the gas pedal. That happens a lot. Yeah, which is still sad. I mean, I mean, when it, when it results in a death or somebody getting harmed like that, yeah. that, that is a bit sad. Uh, I mean, if now if it happened on like the open freeway or whatever or someplace where nobody could get hurt, then it's then it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's all fun and games until someone's dead. 
Yes. And even then, if they die in a stupid way, uh, well, it might be funny. Or if the person is really, 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 really horrible. Uh, I don't know. Would that make me a horrible person to laugh at a horrible person's death? Uh, no, I think there's some kind of clause for that. Okay, good. <laughs> I have to question myself because... Exigent clause. Yes. <laughs> Yes, but yeah, I have to question myself sometimes because I will I will do things that that are just kind of gut feeling that are just like yeah you know what fuck this it's funny and then I come to find out later yeah you are a horrible person. And it's I don't the uh, be a horrible person. Uh, the exigent morbid humor clause of 1835. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Omega. Look that up. Shit. That's that's a real thing. It's totally okay. real, and you didn't hear it from me. Totally real. Okay. In case you find out it's not real. Right. <laughs> Oh god. So um so actually for me, I don't know if you have any, but I personally I pulled a cat this week. I don't have any shout outs. Cuz I've been busy working on game videos, let's plays and shit cuz at one point I w- I want to have enough of a buffer to where I could take a week or two off from everything and just you know, maybe travel or something. But I need that bit of a buffer that way I could still be releasing content too. Let's see. Who should my shout out be? <laughs> <laughs> see, like, I always see people on the internet that are doing really awesome stuff. I'm like, this is totally cool. Next time I co-host, I should totally talk about this. And do I remember? No. I'm usually like, um, you should watch. Well, what you should totally do is to go to Obscurus Lupus's patron Patreon page. Uh-huh. And if you are able to, you should donate to her. I mean, after you donate to this show, obviously, but oh, then yeah. next, you should totally do that. Because Lupa is a good person, and her stuff is funny, and you want funny, don't you? Yes, yes, yes you do. And and I'll be honest, if if I get to a certain position where I can donate to more than just one Patreon account, I will. And Lupa is definitely on that list. So, yeah. They'll go throw money at her. Watch her stuff. It'll be great. It'll be fun. It'll be an experience. Yes. And we need to have her on the show again. It's been there have been there are some people I've not had on the show since we since I started putting this on Blip back in two thousand ten. It's like wow. ah, I want I wanna have them on the show again. Like I wanna get Mars Girl on the show again. Uh who by the way oh, as of yeah. this recording she got married. Speaking of yes. congratulations. Yes, congratulations, Mars Girl and Josh Knight first. Yay, you got married. Yee! Cute. Everybody <laughs> getting married. Yes. Having babies. Yes. Okay, well just two people actually. <laughs> Yeah, they're getting married and, and just watch. They're gonna be popping out them babies right now. Uh-huh. We've got we've got two reviewers babies. There's Baz, um, Basil and Kitsunik's, mm-hmm. like the vegan and Kitsunik, uh, their baby, mm-hmm. who's coming up on one. I think I can I think she was born in in November. And then I know um, Lisa's due, but I don't remember when. Yeah, so there's the two soonish. Of them. I don't think there's any others right now. I think that's it. Yeah. yeah. So it was like, yay! And if there are others, write in the show. Tell me. And we'll, we will... <laughs> if you're if you're pregnant, write the show, especially if you're male, because we want to talk to you. Yes, I would love to talk to you. <laughs> that reminds me of something. Uh, I, I think it was uh, Cypher who, who went on there, to, not Twitter, but uh, Tumblr. And they said, you know what? Send me an anonymous two words that will make me cry. Oh, I saw this, I think. Yeah. And... And I I was of the mind, okay, I don't want to make them, like, cry, cry, like, like break their heart or anything. So I went to go and try Tears of Laughter. So I sent in two words, I'm pregnant. And they just, they, I, I, I could imagine the look they were giving, like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> How is that possible? How does yeah. that be? Yeah, but I obviously failed at that point. Ugh. Well, I remember back in the day there was that that trans guy who um, elected to, to uh, I think – I forget exactly where the genetic material came from, but he was pregnant. Remember that way back in the day? Oh, yeah. And he had a book that was out. I remember that. And I worked with this girl who just couldn't get her mind around the whole thing, and she's like, oh, look, Mr. Mann wrote a book about being pregnant. <laughs> Mr. Mann. Mr. Mann, Yeah. I mean, I, I remember seeing. I, I I don't think I knew at the time that it was a trans that he was a trans man. Rather, well, how did you think that was working out exactly? Like it a did miracle? Junior. Like it did oh. Junior. Find an empty space in the in the man, and there you go. You know, set everything was, up. That's not. That doesn't. You you need more than a hole. You can't just hollow out some guy's beer gut and stick a baby in there. <laughs> that's not how that works. Oh my god! But how awesome would that how, be, though? That would be awesome. <laughs> 
Hey, you're early. You're looking fine. Thanks. Everyone says I've got a glow. Yeah. <laughs> I can see Rednecks doing this. That would be hilarious. <laughs> I'm going to have me a baby. You know, I, I carry it for the wife sometimes when she gets tired. <laughs> there you go. Oh, my it's... God. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. That would be weird. There would be a lot of fluids involved. And I don't think I'm on board for that. I'm just letting you know. Yeah. Well, I don't. It's obviously not for everybody. Obviously. I don't even want to spawn like the regular normal way. I, I tell everyone they're like, you should get pregnant. I'm like, that's not happening. Like I whine enough as it is, like on a natural baseline. Could you imagine me if I was pregnant? I'd never shut the fuck up. Oh, and boy. then you have to go through labor. I have, I have seen the labor process depicted. I have heard it described, and that's not happening. Yeah. At all. Cause... So I told Hagen, you can ad- abduct a child and we'll raise that, but it's not happening natural, I'll tell you what. And yeah. She's not having kids either, so. Yeah. It's like, god damn. Yeah, I- I've seen the same video of, of like, the uh, childbirth or whatever, and it was actual, like, human childbirth in yeah. a high school class in rural Florida. The miracle? It's not a miracle. It's horrible. That's unfortunate. It's That's... a tiny water buffalo being pushed through a woman's vagina. And she doesn't – I mean, like, people can not shave if they like, but, you know, it was, like, all sorts of natural. And she didn't have a Brazilian. I'm just letting you know. Yeah, and, you know – So I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Why are we watching this? Well, it's educational. It, was also, it also scared half the girls in the class. It is. Ever having kids. The other half already had them. And so they're like, oh, come on. It's not that bad. This is terrible. I don't want to be involved in something like that. And I want it, I want it to be like, you know, the 1950s. Where, like, you know, theoretically, my wife would give birth and I would be out there pacing nervously and, you know, reading, like, old copies of Fish and Gay magazine. And then I'll, you know, take off my hat and pass out cigars to everybody and they'll clap me on the back. Yay! You know, like, like lesbian white picket fence kind of thing. There you go. Oh, God. And there, there, there's an image. Well, yeah. Imagine Hagen giving birth. Oh, my God. She it, would probably kill somebody. She probably would. Oh my god, there would be nobody left! Canyons! That would be a really great sketch. I don't know how I would work that in. <laughs> Maybe it would be something like, like Hagen has a dream of that, and so I'm gonna... I'll, I'll collude with the minions, and we'll see if we can make that happen. Somewhere. That would be that would be hilariously awesome. <laughs> oh, oh and, and that actually reminds me of something else. We actually brought it up on uh, this past Constructive Deconstruction, where... Uh, or we were talking about one of the guys. I think a couple of guys had a had an article in the. I think it was uh, Washington Post, where they were talking about how one of them was like rape was a coveted status, and the other one was like, um, you know, if, if women want to stop being abused or whatever, then they need to get married or whatever. Who and, said this? Oh, I can't remember the names right off the top of my head, but we do, we do mention it on constructive deconstruction, and. I think what? I'll go listen to that right now. Yeah, well, Actually, well no, you got to finish right. the show first. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things that the article writers, not of the, not of the news source we actually got it from, but the actual Washington Post article, was it's better for a woman's physical and psychic uh, safety. Yes. Psychic safety. Psychic safety. Like, like, like Madame Cleo. Something like that. Yeah. I tell you what, babe. I tell you what. If you don't want to get raped, you listen to Madame Cleo. No, okay. <laughs> That's so wrong, and I'm sorry. Okay, I'm not sorry at all. Uh, no, you know what you get into when you have me on the show. Yes, I do, and I am thankful for that. <laughs> Madam Gee, you're going to tell you how to keep him from raping you, okay? Yes. Set him on fire. That, that... You got to you, you, you have to really believe, okay? We're going to turn on the... Oh, it's the death card. He died. Yeah. Oh, dear. He's on fire. He died. You know what? It, anti, anti-rapist voodoo. That sounds amazing. That would be awesome. That needs to be a thing. Anti-rapist voodoo. <laughs> somebody, somebody, get on right, right on that. Yes, please, please. We want to see this, but um, but no. Somehow that turned into um, uh, magical psychic lesbians or something. What? Yeah, uh, it it's me and Holly and Gon's only. Sometimes we just or the we 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 sit on a rail and then sometimes we go off the rail. And sometimes you impart magical powers to lesbians. I understand how. It yes, is. and we definitely imparted them to both you and Hagen. So oh. you were both magical yes. psychic lesbians. <laughs> oh, and and I I mentioned I mentioned I was going to make sure you two knew that. <laughs> to fly across the ocean. Yes. With my magical powers. Yes. 
and it'll fly across the ocean. Hey, I'll, I'll, I would, like, hang off of your legs the entire time. That would be really unpleasant for both of us. Uh, probably more unpleasant for me because, you know, I've got almost 300 pounds, you know, below my arms here that, that would have to be – oh, well, that would be also, you'd also have to hold them up too. I'm less than that, so we would not – we would be kind of fighting the laws of physics the entire way. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Well, we'd already be fighting them. You'd be flying across the ocean. Yeah, but that's covered by my magical lesbian psychic powers, of course. Oh, good point. <laughs> Okay. I guess I could make you an honorary lesbian. Yay, honorary lesbian! That'll work. Yay! <laughs> All right, yay! So I get the flight. Wee! Yay. Although I'd probably fly to Chicago first. <laughs> for, yeah, that's a good point. For obvious reasons. <clears throat> So, uh, all right, that, that we gotta we gotta get some news going here, or otherwise we're gonna run out of time. <laughs> oh, this first one is out of New York. A Queens Village man has been accused of making terroristic threats to police. As WCBS 800 Sophia Hall reported, Richard Bolton. Any relation to Michael? No? Maybe. I don't know. Michael Bolton. Yeah, but he admitted that he made the terrorist threats to Nassau County cops and the NYPD. The 30-year-old was upset over summonses that he received, so he called 911 and said he had a bomb strapped around him and he was going to blow up precincts in Nassau County and Queens, according to prosecutors. Mm-hmm. So wait, wait. You're, you're upset about court summonses, so you call the, the – the, the, that's, that's not an emergency. And yeah, but it's a lot better at least than the girl that called the bomb threat because she wasn't going to graduate. This is true too. It's just really, dude. And and of course you escalate it with threatening to you know you know saying you have your own bomb strapped to you. Well, here's the thing: in for a penny, in for a pound. If you're going to do it, you should probably go whole hog. Yeah, I mean the, the article doesn't say whether or not they found a bomb. So it's like although like. I wonder if they took him seriously because he's like, I'm going to blow up two precincts in different parts of New York. Really, sir? With one bomb? Yes. I'm doing it right now. I'm ready. Right. I'm doing it right now. Yeah. That, that, good luck with that. Yeah, good luck bending the laws of physics to your will, sir. Yeah. But he's in jail. You know, where he should be because he's fucking bug nuts. I like, I mean, this was the kind of thing you could maybe get away with back in the day. But after 9-11, just no. Just even if you think the word bomb, you're going to go to jail somehow. Just just don't even. Oh, well, shit. Well, wait, wait. We're talking about a bomb. That means we technically thought about it. We're fucked. Well, we're journalists, so it's okay. Okay. Oh. <laughs> That's a word. Don't I've worry. Covered. I've got us covered. Okay. You got us covered. All right. Oh, so yeah. So the next one is out of Washington. And what one of the good things that's happened this week is – Supreme Court went to both Utah and Indiana and said, "Hey, you know what? Your 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 uh, same sex ban- marriage bans or whatever the fucking unconstitutional. You know, fuck off with them." No, no, that was a federal court. Federal court, right? Yeah, federal not court. Supreme Court yet. Okay, soon. So federal court is saying, "Yeah, you know what, you guys, this is this this bullshit," and you just you know slap backhand them away. I haven't heard anything you know from Utah since then. I haven't heard anything yet, but this story we get to hear about Indiana. Yes. Which, by the way, as soon as as soon as um, the federal court said that, you know, basically, not just said that Indiana's uh, ban on same-sex marriage was unconstitutional. They basically just said, hey, you know what? No, we we are overriding this, and you know, gay people can get married in Indiana now. Well, they did issue a stay Friday. Yeah, that's Friday that's that's where this story is going. Oh. I'm just saying. Yeah. So Indiana Attorney General J- Gregory Zoller, remember this name, has asked a federal appeals court to immediately stop same-sex couples from marrying there, pending the outcome of the state's appeal of a ruling that the that the ban on such marriages is unconstitutional. Gay people are getting married. We need them to stop. They're being happy. They're not supposed to be happy. They're, they're, they're unchristian and heathen. And non-Christians aren't supposed to be happy, especially if they're not straight. <laughs> And I have to do that voice because that's what they sound like. <laughs> the request to the Seventh Circuit, Seventh Circuit rather, Court of Appeals follows a Wednesday request to the trial court to issue a stay of the court's decision from earlier in the day striking down the ban. The trial court judge hearing the case, U.S. D- District Court Judge Richard, Richard L. Young, has not yet responded to the request, although we, we, we do see 
the results later. As we mentioned, there is a stay because, well, we're we're appealing, so so they need to stop until we're done appealing. No. Yeah, but they they actually might not appeal because there was call for people of Indiana to call or contact the um, the attorney general through their website or phone mm-hmm. about what they think. They, so it's possible that, like Pennsylvania, they may choose not to appeal. Yeah, they better not choose to appeal. Yeah, it's like you fuckers. I mean, and the now the thing is, what I find interesting. This is kind of off the off the same sex marriage topic here, but the pictures that they took, like of the Capitol around Indianapolis, I'm sitting. I'm like, you know what? I used to walk around along there. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Ah. Well, what's interesting is since Windsor, which was a year ago last week, no no federal court has ruled against same sex marriage. And it's just it's just waiting to see what state gets to the Supreme Court first. Yeah. I mean, I know that they were like, well, we kicked the ball down the field last year, but, you know, now it's going to be, and you know, maybe another year. And they're like, oh, well, here it is again. Yeah. What – now, as far as the state, I don't know what it means for the same-sex couples who are already married. Um, well, that's the thing. That's why if there's not a stay, as many people try to get married as possible, because what will usually probably happen is then the um, Eric Holder in the federal um, government, I forget, he's secretary or something or other, mm-hmm. will probably come forth and say, oh, citizens of this state who got married and now the thing is being stayed, the federal government recognizes you. So that's what they've been doing. The federal government has been stepping up and saying, even though your state hasn't, you're federally recognized. There you go. And... So that's probably what's going to happen. And the cool thing is, it's hard. It's easier to, to to it's it's hard to take that marriage away once it's already happened. Yeah. It's very legally difficult to invalidate it, especially especially after the federal government says, "Yeah, we're cool with that. You're married." Yeah. Tax and... wise, you're married. Yeah. There you go. And. And, and, and the people who keep on going, crying on states' rights for, for same-sex marriages or whatever, fuck you. Because it should not be a states' rights issue. To me, it's not a states' rights issue. It is it, – it, that's, that's why I, whenever I do mention it – states – mentioned... the majority can't mandate civil rights. Right. Because if that were true, there would be several states in the South that still wouldn't have interracial marriage. Yeah, there are still some that, while they legally have it, they do look down upon it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I was in Maryland, I mean, it's very common to see mixed couples. Mm-hmm. And I was having an internet debate with somebody from the South. And they were like, well, you just, that's why you don't see a lot of interracial marriages. I said, excuse me? <laughs> I see a lot in Maryland. And she's like, oh, I didn't realize that. And I was like, yeah, it's pretty common in Maryland. Nobody cares. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lo- that largely depends on where you are. I mean, yeah, it's just one of those things, man. But we're getting there. It's just getting further and further and further. And one article that I did note, I don't I don't think I put it in any of the files here, that Indiana is actually a lot more super conservative than what people see it as. It doesn't get into oh, the news very often. Indiana's, I mean, no offense, it's like yeah. a fuckhole. I mean, if you live in Indiana, I'm sorry, but really it is. I've had friends that live there, and it's a piece of shit. Yeah, that's that's why um, um, Dark Rose Prime, formerly known as Lady Renee, that's why she got the hell out of there. <laughs> I mean, it I have... Going to Utah, though. I have a friend, and I'm actually kind of worried about this person because I haven't heard from them in a few years, mm-hmm. but um, they are trans, and they can't they can't do anything about that because it's just, they would be killed. I, the person told me that you know their father would, would be horrible to them. You know their mother would probably try to put them in a mental institution and they would probably be killed. Yeah. And I haven't heard from this person in like I said a few years and they had a live journal but they were never on Facebook. So I worry. You know. Yeah. I worry all the time. I'm going to hear a news story out of Indiana and it's going to be this person. I hope not. I uh, hope we don't hear that. Oh. So we get – let's go ahead and move on a bit. Uh, Blackstone Group CEO Steve Schwartzman on Thursday took another not-so-veiled swipe at President Obama. Speaking I at, heard about this. Speaking at Blackstone's Investor Day, he said the biggest risk to his growing alternative assets firm was irrational policymaking. Well, then don't make irrational policies. There you go. That, that's That's simple. <laughs> Even though Blackstone's shares have risen more than 60% over the last year – Schwartzman seemed to be in something of a fighting mood. 
Ah, well, I get into a fighting mood too, but then I just go play Gary's Mod for a while and I can see, seem to calm down. Damn fighting words, Obama. There you go. He said it was ironic. Governments were tasked with making life better for their citizens, but seemed to be doing things that had the opposite effect. A source who was at the Waldorf Astoria gathering told the Post. In reality, several prominent Republicans and President Obama in recent months have challenged the way private equity industry makes money. Houseways and means David means chairman rather David Camp, Re- Republican from Michigan, in February advised ending the carried interest tax break that allows PE fund managers to claim capital gains tax treatment on their commissions, a 20% tax rate instead of 39.6%. Additionally, the Securities and Exchange Commission in May said half of all private equity firms were not telling their fund investors, often state pension funds, what fees they were being charged, putting clear pressure on firms to change their ways. In 2010, Schwartzman compared proposals to raise taxes on private equity conditions in two conditions in Nazi Germany. Because that's something that happened in real life. Yeah. Schwartzman worth I'm sure that's the first thing he, you know uh, first he went after the hedge fund managers and I was not a hedge fund manager so I said nothing that's not how that goes no uh, Schwartzman worth ten and a half billion dollars just saying yeah he also took shot at his private equity peers saying Blackstone had been successful at real estate and energy investing while competitors had failed. He was trying to convince analysts that Blackstone, after doubling its assets under his management in the last four years to $272 billion, would continue to deliver exceptional returns. So I'm not really sure what he's upset about exactly. I'm not either. I mean, It's kind of like – I mean here's the thing. A lot of people you know, have a lot to say about Barack Obama, and that's fair enough I guess. Mm-hmm. But what, one of the things that you, you can't blame him for is things that he did not actually do. Like we were like, oh, and the government and and a recession, and we're out of the recession. Like the stocks are the highest they've been since before the crash. Like, you know, and and, and people have said like, oh, he hates business, but actually he's you know been a pretty strong proponent of big business. Mm-hmm. Just the fact, you know, the 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 whole thing. Oh well, Obamacare is just to put out the small business. No, it's a healthcare program. Stop whining. Yeah, it it's you know it's. And then you say big business. Are you, are you sure you mean big business? Because I know with the whole health care thing and everything, all the laws that are being thought of and passed around, my dad is a small business owner. Well, I guess any business really. Yeah. So so I, I just I just have to wonder because when I think big business, I'm thinking like Walmart, McDonald's, oh. you know, yeah, things like that. There that can afford things like health care I mean, for all the I employees. Work- I work for a large chain bookstore, and I don't know for Fortune 500. We might be. I, I'm not sure. But, you know, nothing changed in our lives after Obamacare. Like, people weren't laid off. Hours didn't change. It's just, you know. I mean, now, granted, you have to work full time to, to get um, benefits at my store. Right. But, you know, it just it wasn't an issue for anybody. Yeah. Because some companies just get over it. Yeah. I mean, I've seen since Obamacare had been implicated and everything. You know, you hear the horror stories about insurance companies doing this or that, doing this horrible thing. Like, oh, my insurance carrier dropped me or whatever for whatever reason, and and that that's not the that's not the fault of the government or the president. That's true. That's well, the fault of the insurance company that's just being bastards about it for whatever reason. Well, let me tell you something because I did spend five years working for a large multinational insurance company. Oh. Here's the thing. And my boss, I, I worked in for a while in the appeals department. Basically, we were a medical review company for this this large insurance company. But if you got denied, then you would appeal it to my department. Your doctor would send in clinicals, blah, blah, blah. But one thing that my boss said, this is one of my favorite bosses I've ever had. She said, people forget that we're a business. We're here to make a profit. And at the end of the day, that's what everything is going to be geared to, making a profit. I mean, I could tell you some horror stories of my time, you know, working there. And the thing is, that's not untypical. People say, oh, well, insurance companies are horrible. Well, yeah, that, that, that's true because their job is to make a profit. Their job is not to care about you, even though all the commercials say it is. Their job is to make a profit. Yeah, which, you know, wouldn't they make a profit off of just getting your premiums every month or six months or whatever your term happens to be? Well, keep in mind that insurance is basically gambling. It's basically betting on your good health. Mm. So 
I mean, if you pay, uh, let's say, $200 a month, mm-hmm. you, you pay $200 a month, you have a standard plan, and you're just, you know, every time you, you pay your $200, they make $200. Right. Or the, the, the broken up through the various ways that your plan is implemented or what administration people are involved with that. But then suppose you need to go to the hospital. You need to go to the hospital. Your appendix is about to burst. You're admitted to the hospital. You have emergency surgery. You're in there for a day and a half, you know, recuperating, and then they send you home. That's an astronomical burden, financial burden right there. Yeah. And basically, you who used to be a $200 profit every month have now just become a $200 profit and maybe a $50,000 loss for that that month. So that's why, you know, you can be refused for pre-existing condition. That's why, you know, some insurance companies now – won't um they won't cover ambulance transport so you might find a six hundred dollar bill for your local ambulance company because it's not something that's covered benefit anymore hmm. yeah i honestly i think <laughs> so that concludes the lecture today on how your insurance <laughs> works if you have any questions i'm liam mcgeek on twitter yeah there you go <laughs> no it's just and that just makes me think more and more that we need to redo the whole healthcare system you know to where we don't have to worry about the insurance you know, like like the whole universal health care thing. I know a lot of people be like, eh, this problem, this problem. But you know what? I've heard that, you know, from uh, – I mean, I'm sure you could probably tell me a little bit better because you and Hagen probably talk about it a bit. Oh, yeah. That the health care over, at least in Great Britain, would be a lot better than it is here in terms yeah, of being actually, able my... to get it and, and, and all of that good stuff and probably paying very little, if any at all. Well, my father-in-law is a retired GP. He's like your town doctor. Right. And there was something really cool, and I, fa- I saw this on Reddit, but it got it went to Facebook and Twitter and everything else eventually. And it was, I think, retweeted by um, the prime minister's office, and it was a bill from Abington Memorial Hospital in America for the birth of a healthy child. And it was $49,000. <laughs> and the thing was, just to remind you, however much you gripe about the NHS, having a baby isn't like this. Yeah. And a lot of people in the UK were shocked. They were shocked. They had no idea. But a lot of us in the US were like, yep. I mean, one year for when Hagen was over for MAGFest, um, she ended up with a dental abscess. Mm-hmm. And I had to take her to the ER. I took her to Baltimore County General. Now, in hindsight, I should have taken her to Howard County General. We would have got seen quicker. But So after four hours in the ER, and she was a mess. She was nearly crying because she was so sure that it, this this ER trip would cost me somehow millions of dollars, right? And I'd be bankrupt. And she had travels insurance, and basically they said call back and give us that information. We could have just not called, and she, <laughs> that's not an ethical thing to do. But we could have been, you know. And she was just so upset because she'd heard so many horror stories. Yeah. Like I mean, I'm getting. I know that when I end up with NHS, all first thing I'll do is go to the doctor, go to the dentist, go to the eye doctor. And probably have to keep answering, yes, well, I know it looks bad, but I couldn't afford to get it taken care of before now. Yeah, I would probably do the exact same thing. <laughs> like, I have, a, I have a cavity, I can see, and I was going to get it taken care of, but then I had to get my wisdom teeth out a few years ago. And now I'm in a place where I'm out of network from the dentist that's nearby, so I'm just hoping that the nerve stays intact until I can go to the UK and have it fixed for free. Yeah. I mean, and Don't that's... tell anybody. Yeah, there you go. And that's one of the things that kind of, uh, you know, if you see me on camera, see me in person, you've seen me, you've got to look at my teeth. They do not look very good. So it's, it's like there's some, like, rod in, like, towards the back, and, like, the one of my front teeth is kind of chipped away. Uh, of all things, biting down on a, I, I think it was fajita. Really? Yeah, of all things. And, you know, so my teeth are a mess. And I keep getting encouragement from people saying, you know, go see a dentist. Go see a dentist. I can't afford a dentist. It's so expensive. I mean, I at the time I got my wisdom teeth out, I had to get all four out. I had actually pretty good dental insurance. It still ended up costing me nearly $700 out of pocket. Oof. Yeah. I mean, and even here. I mean, yeah, my dad is friends with a local dentist. And maybe that might be a little bit, but it probably wouldn't be enough to where I could actually afford it on my own. I would need help. Uh, so, and that, and that goes with a lot of other things too, but you know, that, that's so, just... so the moral of the story is that rich corporate agents should stop bitching about their lives. Yes. Amen. There you go. Oh, so the next one out of Mississippi, 
Louisa Shapley. Yes, a prominent lawyer and leader of the Mississippi Tea Party who was arrested. This can, this can go nowhere good. Oh, yeah. Who was arrested in connection with photos posted online of U.S. Senator Thad Cochran's bedridden wife died on Friday of an apparent suicide, the man's attorney said. So, just based on this alone. Okay, okay. He, he gets busted. He gets caught and he's arrested because these photos of the senator's bedridden wife. I I, I don't even know and at this, this point. Is, this is deplorable because I, I read the original story that basically the senator's wife has Alzheimer's mm-hmm. and she is in a care facility. Right. They gained – first of all, they gained illegal access to that care facility to take pictures of her, which is such a violation of – many of her civil rights yeah. and for for what not and it wasn't something like oh no she's being abused in this care facility and we're going to take this footage to the news no there w- it was it was to help the other guy in the in an election and I, i'm sorry even though they're both republican i think that's deplorable but you know the the at least at least the senator is able to afford you know good long-term care for his wife mm-hmm. because some people can't you know yeah. it's just i mean you won't hear me say it but i'm going to say it you know what if just if, if, if he killed himself because he was embarrassed because this came to light, well, good. Yeah. Good. Kind of ties into what we were saying earlier about about you know death and, and all that stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it's like it's like oh Jeebus, you can be that embarrassed, but you know you're just like the asshole that shot up a bunch of people because nobody would fuck him. You know, it's not even embarrassment. You know what you did was reprehensible, and if you're not good with other people knowing, well, just saying. Yeah. It, you know, he was cowardly and he got out of facing the music. Just just like that other guy did. That that's where the commonality lies for me. He he you know, if, if cuz it says apparent suicide in this article. So if if he got out of this, he if he killed himself to get out of facing the music for all of this, then he was a coward. Yeah, and I mean quite honestly, the charges that he were facing probably wouldn't even be prison time it would probably be probation or something like that but still the fact that you 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 gained a legal entry to a care facility to take advantage of someone who can't help themselves mm-hmm. that's that, that's that's horrific what if that was that what if that was your wife you know yeah i mean and and i'd hate this i'd hate to wonder i'd hate to see what what the pictures were actually going to be used for I mean, it's like no, I, I, I'm not even going to. to, to... And, like I, I, I was speculating because I was talking about this with a with a coworker of mine that they were going to try to say, oh, look how much he cares about his wife. He dumped her in a long term care center. But the the thing is that especially especially patients suffering from dementia, a lot of times the family just doesn't have the resources to care for them in the home. And you know what? That's fine. A lot of times they are safer in a long term care facility, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, nothing. There's at nothing all. wrong with that. It's called asking for help. You still ca- you care enough about you know this, this uh, t- t- Thad Cochran, you know you know he cares enough about his wife to say, look, I I cannot do this. I cannot do this alone. I'm going to get her the best care I can. Yeah, sometimes sometimes you just can't, and the the burden on caretakers in this country is tremendous. Like you hear a lot about about women who have been the sole caretaker for one or sometimes or more special needs children, and then snap and and kill the children and, and themselves. I mean, caretaker burden is is an incredible an incredible burden on your health, on your well being mentally and and physically. It's I I mean. If you if you have the the funds to be able to afford care like that for your loved one, I think that's great, and that's not abandoning them. If any of you are in the situation, any listeners, that's not abandoning them. You care enough about them and enough about yourself to know that you want them to be happy, and they would want you to be happy. Yeah, just Definitely. saying. Oh. Our next. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> in conclusion, someone died, and we're happy about that. Yes. Uh, our next story is out of Eugene, Oregon. Eugene. Yes. Willamette High School graduate Amber Lee is headed to Portland State University in the fall to major in biochemistry. Sweet. We need more scientist chicks. Let's do this. She hopes to eventually become a doctor. Sweet. Doctor chicks. We need more of them. But before she arrives on campus, she has a message for Congress. On Tuesday, she told the Senate Finance Committee that higher education is only for the privileged, and that needs to change right now. 
She says she grew up in an unstable and violent home. She said growing up with her family – growing up, her family was evicted from 12 homes by the time she was nine. Jesus Christ, this poor girl. Through it all, it was school that kept her going. But even after all the scholarships she was awarded and loans she took out, she finds herself faced with the prospect of $40,000 after four years at PSU. She said the federal government could help her and other students by expanding loan forgiveness, limiting interest rates on student loans, and expanding financial aid. Senator Ron Wyden, Democrat of Oregon, chairs the Finance Committee, and he calls some of these proposals common-sense solutions to the enormous debt loads college students face upon graduation. Exactly. This I, – I, I applaud yeah. uh, uh, Amber Lee here. You know, in particular, because she's like, you know what? I got all this stuff. You know, I I, I still have this forty thousand dollar debt I'm gonna have in addition to whatever loans I've got. You know, but you know what? This needs to change. Well, the thing is that, and I, I don't know what your experience was wherever you went to school, but you know, I was told, you know, you have to go to college. You have to go to college, and if you don't go to college, then your life is over. It's nothing. You'll be asking, do you want fries with that? You know. Mm-hmm. Sorry. It's, it's pretty much pop up to my computer. It's okay. <laughs> Hello, random pop up. Well, no, it's my antivirus, and it made a noise, and I wasn't sure if you could hear that. And then I realized you couldn't. So. Oh no. Well, no, we didn't hear anything. So. Well, if you did, you know I need to update. But. Yes. But yeah, I mean, it's it's so bad. It's like I was told, you have to go to college. You have to go to a good college, or your life is over. And you know, I got. Okay, grades, you know, not good, not bad. Certainly, I could have gotten to Penn State or any other state school. And I had a guidance counselor who told me, because I went to school in an area that was like middle, middle class. You know, everybody was assumed that they were going right on to college. And he said, you pissed away college. Your, your grades are not good enough to get into a good school. And I believed him. So I didn't, I didn't try to apply for school because I, you know, why question authority? And when my parents found that out years later, they were like, no, no, you can get into school. You just, you know, you can't go to a really, really good school, but but by that time, I couldn't get any financial aid. Yeah. And I'm even a privileged person. I have, like, white privilege and girl privilege and potato privilege. I don't know, potato but you know privilege. what I mean. <laughs> Shh, hush, potato <laughs> privilege. And, and so I can't even imagine what it's like for someone whose family has no money whatsoever. You know, they're destitute. They're in a, a violent – I can't even imagine that. That, that, that coming and saying, okay, well, I can get some some extra stuff because I have financial need, but after that, what happens? Yeah, because the financial aid is is because I admit I I'm I guess technically kind of lower middle class here. I mean, we own a business, but that a lot of that goes back into it paying employees. I think you know. it's attitude. Do you feel like you're lower middle class? Or do you feel like you're middle middle class? Um. A little bit of both, I guess. I guess it depends on the day. <laughs> a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll. Something like that, except not so much okay, country. I depends hate country on how, music. how drunk you are at the moment. You're like, well, I'm drunk. Uh, I'm a redneck. Too late. <laughs> no, but but no. I mean, for me, for our you know local community college that I went to for my for my uh, associates, you know, it was the the uh, the scholarships I was able to get managed to cover enough to where I could go. You know, without having to take out loans or anything. Well, I took out one loan, a grand total of one loan, and that was just from our local bank. And it was like fifteen hundred bucks, and I managed to pay it back. Thankfully. Yeah, I got I got thirteen hundred from the state. Yeah. And I got nothing federal, and my you know my parents didn't really have any money, and they were up in Boston by that time. So I t tried to pay my way through, and eventually. Uh, one semester, I ran out of money, and so I was like, "Well, everyone was like, oh, it's too bad that you dropped out of college." I was like, "Well, I only ran out of money. <laughs> you want to give me some money?" I mean, going back and still dealing with the federal government, and you know, trying to deal with all this stuff, and trying to just trying to make it through. And I'm even, like I said, in a position of privilege. I can't even imagine how it is for someone without that privilege. Yeah. Oh, God. See, this is another thing that should be free for everybody in this country. College education. It should be free. Now, if you want to have a private college or whatever where people have to pay to get in or, or have really kick-ass grades or whatever, that's fine. But you have these public colleges that receive public money, then those should be free. And you yeah. should be able to say, hey, you know what? I mean, like, sign up. You know, we only have limited space, but you know what? Sign up. If we don't have the space for you, try again next semester or try another college. 
there you go. It is or like it should be simple. Law, as that. law school or medical school or like grad school. I think that you can you can charge for that. Yeah, something that's higher than you know the four years of college. But I mean, there's so many people that, like me, were told you have to go to college, you have to get this big expensive degree, or your life is over. You'll never be anything. And they did, and now there's no jobs. They owe a shocking amount of money. And, you know, they're saying, well, I have my college degree. Are they going to get a job? Everyone's like, <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, I, I have my association theater. I also have my CDL, uh, which I had to go to a trucking school for, which I still owe money for that, actually, which is kind of sad. But at Was the... there a study hall in truck school? Uh, technically, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. You guys could, like, page each other on CB radio? Eh, not quite yet. We We're did. thinking of going out to the bar after school. Yeah, that sounds good. Go over. <laughs> yeah. Trucking school. I, it sounds like so much fun. Yeah. Well, it's not bad. They teach you the basics. Only problem I've seen with it is the one I went to lasted only three weeks. You pass notes. Do you like me? Honk once for yes, twice for no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Truck God. school. That would be a great anime. Truck school. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Japan, get Somebody... on this. Yes, get on that. You know, I mean, Japan, it's not like Japan hasn't done anything, you know, based in America or based on American stuff. I'm looking at you, Panty and Stocking. And you could, like, fight aliens that also drive trucks. There you go. <laughs> it would be like Smokey and the Bandit, but also Macross Plus, yeah. I'm just saying. Or, oh, an anime adaptation of, I think it was a U.S., I think it was U.S. 1, U.S. number 1 comic or whatever. It was one of the ones that uh, Link Carr reviewed a long time ago. Oh, right, right, right. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, but, yeah, education, generally... The, uh, with some very, very few exceptions, it should be free, just like your health care. should be free. Oh. oh, so out of Washington again, Washington. Uh, House Speaker John Boner, because I refuse <laughs> to call him John Boehner. I like how a lot now you'll see in stories they have a little pronunciation guide for his, yes. for his name, just so you don't say Boner, but you're going to anyway. Because he is a Because you're five. Boner. I am because I am five and he is a colossal boner. And he is talking about suing President Barack Obama for allegedly exceeding his constitutional authority when it comes to administering administering the laws that Congress passes. Boner has frequently accused Obama of picking and choosing what portions of laws to enforce, sometimes by ex issuing executive orders. That is particularly so for health care and immigration. Spokesman Michael Steele says the Ohio Republican told members of the GOP rank and file a lawsuit is a rank and file a lawsuit is possible but didn't provide details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what that is? That's like the person who's like, Yeah, well I'm gonna shoe. Okay, well what what's your lawyer's name? Let me get no, well I'm gonna shoe in a second. Right now I'm shooing. Right. It sounds, it sounds, sounds like a, sounds like a certain quote unquote company we know. I know, right? <laughs> Yeah, come at me, bro. Come I know me. that I know that Nash has said this on RDA that the police aren't your mom and dad. Mm -hmm. You can't call the police or call nine one one when you don't get your way. The same thing is true with suing. You just can't sue if you're not happy. Right. It's, That's it's, not the way the law works. Especially you have to sue them for a reason. Yeah, especially if you're not happy with the way things going, because you, Speaker Boner, and the rest of your GOP cronies over there aren't doing your fucking jobs. You're saying Why are there any laws getting passed that we won't let get passed because we're boners? Yeah, you're sitting on your hands because for you, you have this. You, you. It's it's okay. It's one thing to be against, you know, presidential policies and everything. That's fine, whatever. But you are taking this to such a ridiculous degree that you are damaging the country. If you're John Bonner, write the show. Or if you currently have a Bonner, write the show. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> you're going to get some really weird fan mail this week, and it's probably my fault. Yeah, there we go. That would be nice. And I said, Dear Gomer, I have a Bonner, so I'm writing in the show as requested. Thank you. <laughs> don't know why that person sounded like an old lady, but just roll with it. Uh, I don't know. Oh, just just watch. There'll be a comment on the on the YouTube entry from the Cartoon Hero saying, "Yeah, I have a boner." <laughs> We're like, "That's awkward." That's, Thank you that's... for that. Okay, great. Oh, and this one, oh, we've got about ten minutes left. I I want to I want to get to to this this um 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 um. Oh, I'm trying to decide which of the last three stories because we've got three left, and I want to. 
I don't want to be able to cover all of them, but I don't want. They're to all very that. governmental this week. Yeah, very governmental. Um, Not a lot of people shooting each other, so that must be because it's so hot. Yeah, you know the bullets are swelling up inside the gun barrels, and the gun barrels are melting with the bullets inside of them, uh, which somehow don't explode. I don't know why. Oh, uh, but we were we were talking, you know, about about you know college graduates getting out and not being able to find jobs or having to go f- – or in a lot of cases having to go for those, you know, would you like fries with that job? There was even a comic that, that showed like you know, a, a, a guy behind the counter at a McDonald's or whatever, and somebody came in, congratulations on your master's degree. You know, Welcome back and, and all of that good stuff, and it's like that, – that's – the thing is those political comics, they are based on reality. Well, here's a good suggestion. If you are in a situation where you're worried about, you know, you're young enough to be like, oh, well, what should I do? Should I go to college or not? Think about getting a technical degree. Think about getting a nurse degree because nurses are always in demand. Mm -hmm. It's a very rigorous job, but if you're the right kind of person for it, you know, you will be employed. Um, You know, think about getting um, a certification. There's a guy I went to high school with who friended me on Facebook a little while ago. Mm -hmm who um, I did not know this, struggled with heroin addiction um, during high school. I had no idea. But uh, he went to a rehab during his senior year, got clean, and he's a licensed therapist now. Cool. And so he, you know, if you can go out and get a certificate like that, you know, get a teaching certificate. You yeah. know, it's, 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 you know, that's stuff that you can do that it, it'll cost you, you know, not maybe not as much as college, but, you know, at least you can get some kind of work. Yeah. And hell, even going and getting a CDL, that that you know truck drivers. You can are... go to trucker school yeah. and fight aliens with Gomer. <laughs> yeah. That's the song that the the Japanese song. But, but yeah, see the thing is. Oh, trucker school. There you go. I'm sorry. I'm, I promise I'm done with trucker school. I promise. Okay, but you know truck driving is another one of those. You know, as long as you keep your you know your record all right, you should be able to get hired anywhere. Hell, right now I'm pretty much in limbo. You know, as long as I keep my CDLs up, I should be able to get another trucking job, well, probably next year, because <laughs> I I had that many accidents. Granted, again, nothing like horrific. Maybe you need a smaller truck. Maybe, but but they were all like you know small ones, like accidentally backing it the wrong way oh, or, okay. or 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 turning a little too tightly and you know taking out a tire. You that, should play Euro, Euro Truck Simulator, like Gatsu Croce. Yeah, that that might help. Uh, what would also help is if I actually had access around here to a big rig and I could practice around here. That would, that would be a thing. Uh. Can I borrow your big rig, neighbor? Oh sure. Yeah. <laughs> we were classmates in trucking school. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm done. <laughs> Oh, but we say all that. We we do mention all of that, you know, because this story out of Billings, Montana. A Montana judge told a 21-year-old man convicted in a vandalism spree to replace his fast food job with a real job so he can more quickly pay restitution. I really, really, really pray that that kid then said, oh, I'm going to get right on that, Your Honor. Yeah, I hope so. Let me just get right on that for you. Yeah, the Billings Gazette reports District Judge Todd Baugh and, and another one of those with with the with the uh, pronunciation. <laughs> internet internet meme, the bawling bunny. Yes, they sentenced Brandon Daniel Turrell to ten years with five suspended and ordered him to pay over thirteen thousand dollars in restitution. What ba- did he vandalize? Did the story say? Because I don't remember. Uh, let's see. Well, well, let's hope you, oh, it'll say so in the next sentence. Right. Uh, ba is separately facing public censure and suspension for saying a 14-year-old rape victim appeared older than her chronological age. Oh, oh that this ass- guy. Okay, we're familiar that. with your assholery, sir. Oh, this asshole, yeah. Prosecutors said Turrell and a co-defendant used a stolen BB gun to shoot out the windows of about 100 vehicles in December 2012. Oh, okay, that, that, is, that, is, pretty, that is pretty deep. Yeah. I thought it was something like he wrote a bad word on a wall or something. No, that's, but that's actually But even a hundred vehicles I yeah, I, okay, but... I can understand the you know, paying the restitution. That's fine, you know, the you know, or or even oh 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 Because oh, get that probation. getting that replaced, that ain't cheap. That's like yeah. a few hundred dollars a window. So okay, I, I Yeah, the restitution is fine. The jail time uh, uh... Well it's a, it you know what? It also depends on if there might be something locally where they are that over a certain amount of money, it's automatically a felony. Eh, maybe. And, and maybe that's what it is. So, uh, Although I, I think it should be a case-by-case basis, but eh, you know, I don't, at least not 10 years. Come on. 
even with. I five, thought it was well, thought it was ten years probation. Um, it's, was it's, it ten years jail time? It says ten years. I'm assuming jail time. Okay, so I thought that meant ten years probation. I'm like, that's fine with that. Yeah. Okay, then I reconsider. Yeah. If it was just ten years probation, I wouldn't be so worried about it. Yeah. Uh, but Ba asked Turl what he was doing to repay his victims. Turl said he had been working at Burger King, to which Bob responded, "Why can't you get a real job?" Fuck. Well, first of all, now he's a convicted felon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, Judge Ba, fuck you. Okay, because who are you to say what is a real job and what is not? Let me tell you the definition of a job, Your Honor. The definition of a job is you do a service or you do a thing and you get money for it in a professional sense. Yes. Guess what? You know that thing that that. I'm sure a lot of conservatives want to keep illegalized that women will sometimes do with their bodies and even men will do with their bodies for others for as a source of not only income but pleasure. Yeah, that's a fucking job. Mm. By the way, Although, for those... I think if, if we have legal prostitution, though, there should be some kind of some kind of licensing like what they do in Nevada. Oh, yeah. You know, it could be like, a you know, for health reasons. And... Oh, totally. I, I, I am on board with that. Make it safe. Make it legal. You know, all of that good stuff. But the point is. A job is a job. Working at a fast food joint is just as much a real job as some CEO cigar-smoking asshole making six figures running a company. Well, it's because we – again, you know, we got into this thing where if you don't work in an office, it doesn't count. Yeah. Like, I mean, I have – and this happened many years ago at the store where, you know, it, it's always been my second job. Mm-hmm. And I know, um, I know teachers who work during the day, and they'll work nights and weekends at the store. They they have quote unquote real jobs, but you know this guy, you know, was really really nasty. His son was buying like a few books, and so I you know I finished them, rang, rang them up, and he goes, "The kid, you better read these." The kid's like, "I'll read them." He goes, "Because if you don't, you're gonna end up like her." Asking, "Do you want fries with that?" And Ouch. I was like, "Oh shock!" And I only really did this because the uh, the, the the cash wrap lead was standing right next to me, and he was in his sixties and like six foot something or other, mm-hmm. and so. Uh, and so I said, uh, well, actually, sir, if everything goes well another semester, I'll have my doctorate, but have a good day, which was a lie. but Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's how it works. And it's just – and I, next time somebody tries to tell me because you know what? I, I, I do have the Patreon, and I do get, try and get as much – a little bit of income here and there as much as possible. But you know what? Oh, yeah, all of us. The people say, oh, well, you do stuff on the internet, but that's not a real job. Yeah. Try telling that to Doug Walker or James Rolfe or Joe or Vargas. Lewis. Or, or Lewis Lovehog. He does it full time. Yeah. Or, or even try telling that to me because guess what? I only get at this point, if you look at my Patreon, it's $7 per video. Well, once I get into school and I have money, I'm totally going to do anything. Sweet. I don't know if I count because I'm technically on the show, but you know what I mean. <laughs> hey, every little bit helps. That's true. So, yeah. You know, and and I produce a lot. I produce at least twelve shows a month. Well, well, twelve podcasts a month. That's not counting the number of let's plays that I do. I want to get back into video reviewing, but I'm kind of still not feeling the spark of it. I've mm-hmm. got one still in the can. I've still got to do voiceovers for. But that's one of the things about. That's one of the reasons why I have like. If you look at my Patreon page, the five dollar per video one, that you know the request or guest spot or whatever. That's one of the things I hope will help spark me. Not the money itself, but just somebody requesting I do something and say, here, I want to see this, do this. Maybe that will help spark things. But the point is I work my ass off putting these together because it's not easy. Not only do we have to record this shit, I've got, I, do, I do all the editing. Mm-hmm. So it, it's it's not easy. Yeah, editing itself, depending on the show, sure, it can be easy. With these podcasts, there's very little editing. Very, very little. Like so you used if, to cheat like me. I, I go in and I, I take up pregnant pauses and mouth noises, and I make Hoggins sound a lot more succinct. Yeah. But I also, I've also i also tried doing similar things like that myself, and it just – to me, it sounds a lot less natural, mm. and I like it to sound natural. That's fair enough. So – and plus, if I get going, I can probably ramble and rant for a good amount of time to cover for space. <laughs> That's but, – But then again, I think we all could have that ability as well. I picked my co-host wisely. <laughs> you fool. Yes. Oh, but – so yeah, if somebody, douche, were to te- yeah if somebody were to tell me this is not a real job even though it doesn't make much, I will personally kick you in the privates. But the thing is that like – I mean this guy already is in trouble for being a douche. Like mm-hmm. – it's that whole attitude too. 
of like, well, I think things and stuff, and that's the way the world is. Yeah. Like, oh, well, you know, the, she got herself raped. Well, she looked older. Well, th- that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you look. If you get raped, that's not your fault. It's not because of what you were wearing. It's because some guy had something to prove to – maybe to himself, you know, said, hey, I'm going to fuck that woman. I am going to force her to fuck me, and ha, 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 ha. <laughs> I don't the know if there's The eternal narrative of every rapist, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> You know, because it is all about power. Yes, sex is involved, but how no, I, that I, sex? He's forcing it. it. It is a lot about power, but it's the same kind of people who, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to stereotype the guy, but I'm going to stereotype the guy because, well, he's not here in the room with me. But it's the kind of guy that you know when he was in school, like, you know, he had trouble getting a girl. And he told himself, oh, well, you know, the girls that sleep with other guys, it's just because they're sluts. Yeah, they're sluts. You know, I, I only want a good girl. And, and that kind of that kind of thinking carries on until later in life. Yeah. Which, you know? Which is sad. I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones because I know there was a point in my life where I thought similarly. I don't know if I thought exactly the same, but I know I thought similarly. I am happy to say I have grown past that. <laughs> you know, so I am one of the lucky ones. And if I can – I'm going to say this on the show right now. If there is a way that I can get others to similarly come to the same point that I am, then I will help. I will do whatever I need to. That you know, Just call on me say, hey, you know, we need your help here, and, and I will do what I can, however I can. Well, you know what it makes me think of? There was a commercial, and it was shocking when it hit YouTube. This is a few years ago. It was from Scotland, and um, there's a woman browsing at a department store. And lady comes over. She goes, "Oh well, can I help you find anything?" And she goes, "Yes, um, I'm going out with my friends tonight, and I'm looking to get raped." And she says, "Oh well, well how about this little number? Oh, I I don't know. You know, well, how about this one in blue? Oh yes, yes, I think I will get raped if I wear that. Thank you." And then the, the byline was, "No one's asking for it." And I was like, "Wow, that's really brave to have an ad like that." You know, yeah. we need more ads like that here in the United States. <sighs> in fact, you know what? You know what? We could, we could like. We can like get everybody together. Considering the majority of my co-hosts are female, you know, it, you know maybe we could all get together and and make something like that. Put it out on YouTube and then see if we can't get it on a national television station. I've had ideas about doing and about doing PSAs. Like I really, I don't know how I do it, but I really want to do something with a whole bunch of people to benefit benefit suicide prevention. Mm-hmm. I've talked briefly with Holly about it. It'll come together eventually. But oh yeah, I'd I'd love to do a, a PSA. Awesome. I mean, I don't think I could act in it, but I could help direct or something. Yeah. Camera or something. There you go. <laughs> oh, so with that, that is going to be – that is technically our last news story because we are out of time. We've got two other ones. I'm going to save them for next week because I really want to cover them. So they'll, they'll be up at the front next week <laughs> unless something even better comes along, which you never know what will happen. God only knows. Yeah, so thank you guys for listening. If we wanted to find Omega on the social medias and the such, uh, where could we find her? You can find me on Twitter at the Omega Geek. Uh, I also have a website, omegageek.com. I have a Blip account for a little while longer. <laughs> I have a YouTube, although it's not very active right now. I'm working on that. I'm working on fixing that. Yeah. Um, I'm also on Nerdvice. You can find Lesbian Talk on the guy with the glasses.com. And I think that's everywhere. Oh, and on your site as well. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I always figure that I don't have to say that because it's your show. Oh, well, yeah. People who listen will already know it. And they'll be like, oh, of course, Omega knows. Well, well, unless they listen from iTunes. Oh, that's true. Yeah, because we are on iTunes. If you're listening to iTunes, right, show. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and if you want to know, we're right in rtgomerprod.gmail.com. There you go. Oh, so for me, you can find me on the social medias, Twitter, Tumblr, at gomer 21 X, which incidentally is also my YouTube channel as well. I'm going to start putting up some YouTube-centric stuff that's not necessarily going to go on my site or on Nerdvice or anywhere else. Um, actually, actually, I do have one up. Um, I've been doing some online Pokemon battling with Pokemon X, and I'm trying to get the hang of recording have it all. Have you caught them all? I have not caught them all yet. Oh, not this generation, at least. You've got to. Yeah. I've, it's like the law. Okay, I have seen and or caught the equivalent of about four generations worth. And Is that a lot? Yeah, that's over five. I've, I've actually, I think it's up to like 520, 552, I think. I remember there was 100 of them. 150. 151. Was that the first one? Yes. I watched the first episode of Pokemon randomly when it aired on TV, and I was like, huh, anime on TV, that's kind of cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, I actually can, you can watch it on Netflix too. And, I know, but that's work. I, I know the basic idea. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, you can find me on all those places and, and then the stuff on the YouTubes. Uh, you can find my stuff also on nerdvice.com and rtgomer.com. And if you like the shows that I do and you want to help support the cause or whatever and, and help make my job a little bit more viable, uh, you can head on over to patreon.com slash gomer21xx. Uh, you can donate as little or as much as you want. Again, I mentioned the $5 uh Mark there, if you donate $5 or more per show, well, I say per show, per production or whatever I have there, then I will either get you a guest spot on one of these shows, your choice, <gasps> and or I will do a review of your choice. It, it <gasps> could be whatever, as long as it's not you know overly pornographic because I only have so many happy Mega Man heads to go around. Tweets so, and prizes. Yes. <laughs> so uh, and, and of course, that one is currently limited. Uh, one person actually – is there at this point, and I'm trying to talk to her about about doing one or the other, but she hasn't gotten back to me yet. But um, but uh, but you know things will be happening, uh, so you can check that out. Also, if you want some fabulous artwork or some kick-ass animation, you can check out my girlfriend Becky Hopkins over at Patreon.com/slash Becky Hop, which also has links to her DeviantArt account, her own personal website that you can check out while you're there. And if you like what you see, toss her some money. You'll get some great artwork, which you can see somewhere around my site. Some of my title cards, uh, the Constructive Deconstruction title card is by her. And if you throw enough money at her, she will do a 30-second animation for you. Wow. 30 seconds of animation from an award-winning animator. Hey, yeah. you could make that your intro if you had a show. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm just saying, people out there. Yes. <laughs> yes, she is an award-winning animator. Uh, so toss money at her, patreon.com slash Becky Hop. And, don't, don't, and, if you feel, and again, if you feel the need to throw some money at me, patreon.com slash gomer to one double X. I am done being a whore. The <laughs> show is about over. We will catch you next time. And until then, this is Gomer, the ranting thespian with the Omega, signing Bye-bye. off. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.